This is the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max and it's teamed with the 220 watt bifacial solar panels from EcoFlow as well. Today we're going to find out what you get in the box, we're going to find out how it works in some various off-grid and in-home scenarios, we're going to put it through its paces, we're going to try and trip it out and see what it can cope with and then we'll get really serious with our testing. So stick around to the end and let's find out what EcoFlow can do and if it's the right choice for your off-grid application. <laughs> the packaging is a mixture of recyclable cardboard boxes, there's two and about half a dozen pieces of foam, that's less recyclable. I'd like to continue to challenge manufacturers to make their packaging as recyclable as possible, but I do acknowledge, and this is a perfect example, both sides of the box were collapsed in the delivery process, that there is a challenge in keeping these things safe before they get to you. Oh, and you get some mints. Don't eat the mints. So starting out with the stats, this thing is impressive. It's got two kilowatt hours of stored charge capacity. That's expandable with two additional battery packs up to six kilowatt hours, which is about the size of your standard home battery. It also allows a draw of up to 2,400 watts at any one time, meaning that you can keep most of the plugs on this thing busy without tripping it out but we'll try and do that anyway. Outlet wise, it meets or exceeds what I've come to expect from these battery packs. We've got your four household outlets on this side and your standard 12 volt plug here behind the little rubbery flappy thing. I don't know why they always do that, but you can plug your fridge in there. Right around here, we've got two fast charge USB-A ports, two regular charge USB-A ports, two 100 watt USB-C ports, and then around the back here, we've got our two expansion ports so that you can plug in your extra two kilowatt hour batteries, bringing this up to a total of a blistering six kilowatt hours of full storage. You get a car cable, you get a 12 volt adapter cable, and you get a home kettle plug socket cable. You don't get any solar panel accessories. These come with the solar panels, which is okay if you're buying the EcoFlow solar panels, but if you've got existing solar panels, they'll need the small rectangular orange connector. Charge time's fast too. The manufacturer claims 80% charge from 0% charge in 43 minutes. Let's plug this thing in and put it through its paces. Now let's check out the EcoFlow's off-grid capacity for normal things before we get crazy. I've plugged in a 12 volt car fridge, a battery charger, a light and a kettle which is not on yet. Then on the other side I've plugged in a remote control for a drone, a couple of camera batteries, a high capacity torch, a mobile phone, another camera light and a drone. They're all charging at the moment. Let's turn on the kettle, make ourselves a cup of tea. Looks like it can cope with all of the above. The kettle obviously makes an enormous difference in the draw. You can see here with the kettle going and all of the other devices either charging or working, we're right up near our 2400 watt capacity. If we turn the kettle off, you can see we drop right down to about 200 watts. Kettles are a massive draw. You can also see that we've gone up to nine hours of continued life, just drawing the rest of the devices. If we turn the kettle on, we're down to about 48 minutes of life in this battery with a continuous boiling kettle, which you're never going to have. So when the power goes out, can you keep your fridge going, charge up your tool batteries, keep all of your devices topped up and make yourselves a cup of tea? Yes. And provided you don't make yourself a cup of tea continuously, you've got about nine hours life out of the battery with all of this drawing from it. Oh. Yeah, that two kilowatts of capacity is gonna come at a price. It's a chunky one, 
weighs in at 23 and a half kilos for this battery. So just as well, it's got secure handles at the top. Handle to handle, it's just under 500 or half a meter wide. It's about 310 high and it's about 200 through. Keeping the off-grid theme going, it'll also run a water pump. How does it go against a welder? Now this is a test that I put a lot of my batteries through and I'm going to explain how the test works a little bit for you right now. So this is your weld class inverter MIG welder. It's my go-to welder for off-grid applications. But like all welders, it has a heavy current draw and there will be a point of time at which this flips its lid and throws the safety switch. We're going to start at a 50 amp draw and we're going to go up and see at which point in our welding we make this flip out. Okay, so we're starting at 70% spool speed and 50 amps. Let her rip. Well, that was boring. I laid down a full weld. Nothing happened. Let's take it up to 70 amps. There we go. There's 70. Okay, full bead at 70 amps. Let's go up to about 90. Now's when it should start to get interesting. Most batteries kick off at about this point. And that blew at about 90 amps of draw. I'd also had to put the feed speed up a little bit just so that I could get an arc. That's pretty impressive. This welder will go up to about 150 amps of draw. So you've got about half of its capacity that you can use comfortably with the battery and maintain a consistent weld, which is going to do you really well if you've got some off-grid emergency welding, you want to weld on some gate hinges, something like that. Now with all of our shenanigans so far, I've still got 92% capacity in this battery and I need to run it down a bit so that I can test the solar panels on a winter's day tomorrow morning. So it's three o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. I'm going to plug the household fridge into this and I'm going to use the fridge as normal, getting drinks and getting food in and out of it all night. We're going to unplug this at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning and see how much capacity has been taken out of the battery, then take it outside, connect solar panels to it and see how they perform in winter. So after running the fridge inside from 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon until half past 6 this morning, the battery was down to about quarter charge. Now we'd started off at about 90% charge and we got down to about 25-26% by running the fridge all night. And as I said, I used it for getting drinks and food and everything as per normal. I didn't leave it sort of sealed up or anything like that. Now we come to the solar panels. How easy are the solar panels to use? Well, they're slightly oblong, so they only fit one way into the bag. The panels themselves are partially flexible. Looks like they've got three or four bus bars per cell here. So if you cover over a cell, they'll keep working. The stands on the back are supported by elastic bands. So if you try and move the panel at all, the stands collapse and you have to go back through and re-stand the whole thing up again. There's no fixed stand position, which is good because you can adjust them to any angle, but it's bad because they're annoying every time they move or they get blown by wind, you've got to go through the whole process again. Once again, as per normal with these power stations, there's an adapter cable to connect the power station to the panels. That adapter cable comes for free, included in the pack with the solar panels. But if you buy the power station and you've got other solar panels, you'll have to buy your own adapter. So it's probably worth just sticking with the system here. These panels are rated at 220 watts, 
we're in early morning winter sun here in Victoria in Australia so we're down quite low from the equator and we're still pulling around about 160 170 watts of power out of the sun and it's telling me to get the battery fully charged it's going to take 11 hours we've probably got about 10 hours of sunlight in a standard day so you can run your fridge all night charge all day and sort of maintain an equilibrium so it's a pretty impressive little unit with two kilowatts of stored power just in this unit and the ability to upgrade it to up to six kilowatts with two backup power units the ability to charge it by solar with up to two sets of solar arrays at any one time the ability to charge it from your power point in under an hour its ability to run welders and things like that off grid, but also power your fridge overnight at home and charge in under a day using one bank of solar panels at 220 watts. The solar panels are good. They put out good performance in winter. I don't particularly like the stands that they come with, and I'm going to be interested to see how they cope with being folded up and unfolded over a long period of time but they do fit well with this little unit you've got full compatibility and all of the cords are supplied either with the panels or with the unit to allow you to use this in a range of applications without having to pay more money for accessories so it's worth having a think about it they've got life po4 batteries there so they're pretty stable although i wouldn't go hitting them over the head with an axe <laughs> And that brings me to my public service announcement. Don't puncture, incinerate, squash, or otherwise deform these batteries. There are limits to everything. Don't forget if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and send this to someone who needs to spark up their life.